My name is Jim Kibler of Kibler's Long Rifles, and this is a continuation of the series on uh, assembling our colonial rifle kit that we offer for sale. Um, the gun is well underway. The last time we installed the lock and did some work on the sliding patch box lid, and uh, now we're going to continue with installing the trigger and the trigger guard, probably ramrod pipes. Um, so the first order is the trigger itself. Um, we already installed the trigger plate in the first video. So the trigger then is going to go in the slot. Okay, and it won't go in right now since the lock is in place, but we'll be able to take the lock out and install the trigger. Um, and there's a pin that goes through a pre-drilled hole in the stock and that the, the trigger pivots on and the trigger, when you pull it, will trip the sear on the lock. So that's how this single trigger or simple trigger works on a, a, a muzzle-loading rifle. So we're going to go ahead and remove the lock and the side plate, get it out of our way, and prepare to install the trigger. Now the trigger, top of the trigger, will need slightly adjusted to mate with the sear properly, and by that I mean the height of the, the trigger will need to be adjusted a little bit, so we'll, we'll file or grind a little bit off the top of the, the trigger in order that it has a, a real nice fit. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the side plate. install the, the trigger. So it should slip in, even with the plate installed, it should slip in place, which it does. And the idea is we want to install the pin. There's a pinhole that goes from underneath the side plate and it exits inside the lock mortise. So as I mentioned, a little bit of material does need to be removed from the top of the, the trigger uh, itself. Now I could install this right now but I, from experience, I know that typically we do need to remove a little material. So I'm just going to go ahead now, grind a little bit of material off the top, which should get us very close to the, uh, to the, uh, the point we need to be at. Now, it, what I would recommend for somebody assembling the kit is put it together as is and, and make sure that, that what we're looking for is a little bit of play in the trigger. And I'll explain that more, but play, I mean a little bit of slack between the trigger and the sear, where the trigger bar contacts the sear. Um, and we'll, we'll show you that, demonstrate that as we proceed a little further. So I'm just gonna take one moment, go over to a belt sander, remove a little bit of material from here, and uh, then we'll install it and see how it works out. So I'll be back in one moment. Okay, so I have removed just a little more material. This, that same step can be done easily with a file. You don't need a belt sander. And I'm gonna use a mill file clean it up a little bit. It's a good idea to put it in a vise when you're doing this sort of thing, but since I'm just removing a tiny bit of material, I can hold it in my fingers and I'm used to a file so I can get it done without moving the, the stock. But it's always a good idea to hold your metal piece in a, in a vise when you're working on it. Okay, so I'm just removing any little tool marks. I didn't remove much material. I'm guessing maybe 20 thousandths, 30 thousandths maximum. Remove any burrs. So now we need to install the trigger and pin it in place. Included with the kit is pin stock. This is music wire, piano wire, but we've drawn it, drawn it back. By drawing it back, it means we've temp retempered it, tempered it to a higher temperature than it was originally tempered at. So. With that being the case, it's still strong material, but you can cut it with side cutters. It's a little more friendly to work with. So I'm gonna cut a piece off. When you cut a piece off, always file the end to a generous lead. Okay. Now sometimes a little tricky to line up the 
the hole in the trigger with the hole in the stock. What I like to do is I like to look down through the hole. Oftentimes it's helpful to have a little light shining from below and you can kind of get everything lined up. I believe that's lined up pretty good. So I'm gonna put a little pressure on the side. Find the hole that's underneath the side plate. Insert the pin and tap. Okay, so I didn't get it lined up quite right. I'm gonna to try to just move it a little bit, see if I can snap it into place. There, okay. Okay. So the trigger pivot, it's a tiny bit snug right now. And the reason why it's probably a tiny bit snug is that when I first was tapping the pin in, I kind of hit the edge of the hole. I didn't hit the hole perfectly on the first try, so there's probably a little bit of a burr. So when we take it apart next time, we'll make sure there's no burr on the side of that hole where the pin goes through. So now we can put the lock in and see how close we are. Put the lock in place. And there's, right now, there's no slop, so there's pressure from the sear spring on the trigger right now at rest. And for now, I'm just gonna just squeeze the lock in, in the mortise. So we're gonna, we're gonna check half cock position. Okay, so it'll drop in, but there's definitely a lot of pressure on the trigger at half cock. We'll go to full cock, and there's a little bit of slack, as you can see. So we can pull the trigger, and it'll, it'll function, but we don't want that much pressure on the trigger, especially at half cock. It can have pressure at rest, because the sear isn't doing anything. But at half cock, you don't want too much pressure at all on the trigger, and there's a good bit of pressure. So that means that what we're gonna to need to do is remove the trigger and grind or file a little bit of material from it. So we're gonna pull the lock out. I'm gonna take some vice grips. Pull the pin. Okay, pull the trigger out. We'll see if the the, um, you can see where we kind of marred the edge of the hole a little bit, so that's what was causing the trigger to work a little hard. So I'll take a, a file and clean that up a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the grinder, take a little more material off, and I'll be back. So we removed just a little more, not too much, because we're pretty close. So I'm gonna use the file again to Move the coarse belt grinder marks. And this is a mill file, which generally leaves a pretty, pretty smooth finish. Get rid of any burrs. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we're going to go through the procedure again by slipping it in, slipping it in the plate. Get the hole lined up, which you can look down through. Find the pin. A little pressure on the side of the hole, the side of the trigger. Oops, come on. This can be a little fussy here. And tap it in again. We did better there that time, so it went right in. Trigger's running a little freer. Pretty good, actually. Okay, so we're gonna try the lock again and see how it works. Tap. So there's a little play now. We'll play at half cock, we'll play at full cock. So that's gonna be fine. So what we're gonna do now so we're gonna bolt the lock in place, hold it in, and test it that way, because it can move around and change. So we need to cut the pin off. So in order to do that, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull the pin out all the way, but I'm not gonna go through that trouble again. I'm gonna pull it out just a little bit. Use some clippers. This is probably 
a little, not, not extremely safe to do it this way if you're not familiar, but I can get it done. And I can tap it back in with a pin punch. Okay, so that's done. Now we'll install the side plate. Install the lock bolts. Okay, after you install it, I like to tap the lock, make sure it's in the mortise. Again, there's a little play. Half cocker's a little play. Full cocker ends up being a little play. That's fine. So now, we'll give it a try. What we'll do is we'll put the flint in, the lock, and we'll, we'll run the mechanism and see how it works. So we're gonna pull the frizzing down to square up the flint. We're going to also make sure the flint doesn't hit the side of the barrel. That's always a good thing to do. Tighten it up. Okay, so we're going to drop it down. So the way the, the operation works is that's at rest. Half cock, close the frizzing, full cock, and it's ready to go off. Works well. So that operation is done. So now we're going to move on to the trigger guard. So to get it clamped back up in the in the vise, trigger guard is here. Now it needs a, a tiny bit of prep work before we, uh, we install it in the stock. There's a little bit of a burr on that corner. I'm going to get rid of. We always want to file a slight draft on the edges and to clean up the edges. So I'm going to do that. And again, it's best to hold this in a vise if you're not very familiar with the file. I can get it done without holding it in a vise, so that's why I'm doing it. But holding it in a vise is much, much more controllable than what I would recommend. One area that needs a little attention is there's a step where the trigger guard overlaps the trigger plate. Usually there's a little bit of a flash line in there and some debris, so it's good to define that step a little bit more. Move it towards the end of the trigger guard a little bit because it can sometimes just very, very slightly interfere with the, the trigger guard. So I'm just filing that step just to, excuse me, the trigger plate. Filing that step just a little more. Now we have a little nub sticking up of what was the gate for the, the trigger guard here and here. We can use a file to get rid of that or you can use a belt grinder. I'll just go ahead and just use a file here. Let me find the coarsest file I have out to make it easiest. We'll use this one here if we can. I'll see if I can do it without smashing something. Again, putting this in the vise would be preferable, but we'll get it done. The idea is to get rid of whatever's left of that gate. Okay. While we're doing it, we're going to come up here. We're going to get rid of the parting line. If there's any left. Looks pretty good. We have to do this side. Put just a slight, slight draft on it. Clean it up. Make sure it's not bent. Sometimes these can be misformed a little bit, and this one looks like it's bent just a tiny bit. So just, they're soft enough you can bend them in your hands. We do straighten these trigger guards, but sometimes they just need a tiny bit more attention. So we're gonna look towards the inlet now. The inlet looks pretty good. Make sure there's no fuzz in it. Square up the corners a little bit. And with any luck, it'll go. So we put the install the, the front first. So it's very, very close. I think with a little tapping, it's gonna go, but we'll see. Now I can see, unfortunately, this trigger guard is not straightened perfectly. We, we do our best to straighten them as well as we can, 
And usually they go in without any adjustment, this, but this one happens to need a little bit more bending. The front needed to come over a little bit. So the easiest way is to squeeze it in a vise and move it over. But I might be able to do it. Maybe, maybe not. Might be able to do that, I don't know. So it, it needs a little bit of a twist, so I'm gonna move over to a different vise and twist this a tiny bit. I've just twisted this front extension a tiny little bit to, and hopefully it'll line up a little better. Okay. That looks like it's pretty close. So let's see what tapping this is going to do. Oh, yes. That's going right in there just perfectly. Now we're going to. We didn't file the back, so we do need to do that before we try to tap it in place. So I'm going to remove, remove the, the trigger guard. I'm going to file the back end of it. And again, just a little draft on here. Clean up the cast edge. Clean up the end. There's a little parting line that you can get rid of. A little bit here. And any gate that's left. Okay, and then the parting line that's left. So that's ready to go in. Now I know from experience that it's gonna hit the front of the, this inlet a tiny little bit. So I'm just gonna go along with the chisel and just bevel that off. Just to just take a little sweep, a little scoop. You can see that or not, but it'll provide a little bit of clearance for the, the guard. Now I believe it's ready to go in. Install the front again. Tap it in place, the back end is down in place too. So again, if it's perfect, virtually no wood removal and uh, no fussing around, it's ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and pin the trigger guard in place now. So, we're gonna use a clamp. This clamp's a little large for the job, but I think it'll, we can make it work. So we wanna hold the trigger guard in its mortise bit so you might be able to see a little better so I'm clamping it as close as I can to the pin location squeezing it in place now we're going to take a drill bit a 16th inch drill bit or the number size that's one higher number size than the 16th inch bit I think it's about thousands or two larger I don't recall what that is off the top of my head um, so a 16th inch bit or the number drill wire drill a little bit the next size up from a 16th. I'm going to put it in the hole and the key is with this is if you're not careful you can wallow out the holes. You want it to be straight. Um, there's already a hole in the wood so you want it to be, be straight and then we can start drilling. Okay we're through. So now the back end can be clamped in place, but it looks like it's pulled down in there quite good. So I'm not gonna be concerned about clamping this back in place. However, if you wanted to, you can come again with a clamp like this and kind of squeeze it in place. We'll leave it on there and drill through. Those holes are in there. Now we're going to take a piece of pin stock once again. Cut off two pieces. Around the end. And you want a pretty good lead. So we've got that rounded. You can see that has a pretty nice little lead on it. You can also Clamp, chuck this up in the drill and hold a file against it and round it, spin it. That's a nice way of doing it too. So I'm rotating as I'm running the file here. That lead will help it find the hole. 
So now, we're gonna tap it. You can feel it when it goes in. That's in place. And that's in place and through. Held in place good. So that operation is done. We're a little bit, a little deep on our inlets here and there. Not a lot, but a little bit. You can kind of see it's a little deep here, a little deep in the back. So what we'll do is we'll flush off the wood here after, um, you know, after we get done with the whole kit. So now let's move on to the next operation, which is ramrod pipes. They go pretty fast, so it shouldn't take too long. We'll start at the rear, uh, rear pipe, the entry pipe. I see there's a little bit of debris, a little bit of wood chips along the edge, so I'm gonna kind of clean that off. Some wood cuts really clean, some wood doesn't. So I'm gonna scrape any of the little chips and crap off of there. See, there's a little bit of fuzz. That's not too bad, I don't think. So I'm gonna take the, the empty pipe. Again, we need to file the edge just a little bit. And by just a little bit, I mean just, just take off any anything that's sticking up, any roughness, but not too much. And always keep that, that draft. So I, it may look like I'm filing it haphazardly, but I'm really not. I'm maintaining a draft and just taking a tiny little bit off. A little bit off the end. Clean up the parting line that was there. Run it over across the bottom here. Just make sure there's no, no bit sticking up that's gonna get in your way. So one really nice thing about this kit, the entry, an entry pipe can be very difficult to inlet, very time consuming. But one thing we're, again, very proud of is, is how fine the inletting is for the, the entry pipe. Typically, it'll go in with little to no wood removal. So, there is a tiny bit, tiny radius at the, the back. It's cut with a 16 inch bit, so a 30 second radius. So I just kind of hit that with a chisel, and you may not even have to. So now we can put the entry pipe in place. Okay, I like to take a chisel or a screwdriver. And tap it home. And as you can see, it went right in without any fussing around, no gaps, a perfect fit. So we're gonna cut a pin. One thing I didn't point out is that the, the pipes already have a little slot cut for the pins. That can be a difficult, drilling the hole can be difficult sometimes. So we've, uh, figured out a way to mill a slot for the pins so it's already completed. I can show it to you on one of the forward pipes. See the slot that goes through there? So it aligns with the hole that's already drilled through the wood. So we're gonna install the pin. It could be a nice thing to put a little wax on the pins too before installing them. Okay, so I'm gonna drive a drive a pin in again. Make sure there's enough lead on your on your on your pin. Okay, so that's in place. It's snug. It doesn't move around. That's exactly what we want. So now we'll move for, to, the, to the forward pipes. Again, make sure there's no fuzz. This has a little bit of fuzz and garbage. Just scrape it off if there's any fuzz. So we'll pick a pipe. Looks good. Make sure it's going down in the inlet, which it looks perfect. Take a piece of pin stock again. I'm gonna go ahead and cut two. One, two. Again, put a little lead. the muzzle, which looks great once again. And 
and okay it's tight they don't wiggle there's no gaps that's a very good job now one thing to note is it's a good idea with these forward pipes to mark them so they go back in the same place and the same orientation so that's uh just something to keep in mind so now we've got options on what to do next um how are we doing for time like 26 okay we've got options on what to do next let's go ahead and since we're working on the ramrod pipes let's work on a, the ramrod itself so i'll be back in one moment i'm going to pull a ramrod from the rack and i believe i have a ramrod tip already and we'll uh get it taken care of so hold on one moment Okay, found a ramrod. Find a ramrod tip here. The ramrod tip should fit on there. Fits on there nice, doesn't wobble around or anything. So we've already got a little tenon cut. These are nice quality ramrod tips too. They have nice styling, very similar to original ramrod tips. So we've got to pin this thing in place is what we have to do. So in order to accomplish that task, we use a little finish nail. I'm not sure the size, but it's a little finish nail here. So take a drill bit. It's 70 thousandths, I believe, is the size approximately 70 thousandths. Again, it's a, a wire gauge drill bit. Let me find it here. And that's not it. There it is, right there. We're going to take this. You may want to put a little light center punch mark, but if you're careful, you can start it like this. So we've drilled a hole through the tenon, through the, the tip. And then there a few times, clean it out. I'm going to take a counter sink. Although you can also use another little, a slightly larger drill bit. So it's good just to take it and just kind of, I just spin it in my fingers, just to champ for that hole that you, you drill just a tiny little bit. But you can, like I said, just take a larger drill bit if you want, and hold it in your fingers and do the same thing. And it doesn't need much, just a tiny little bit. So now, if I can find the nail that I, Head. I'm gonna where they cut the nail tips they can be a little bit bigger squashed out so I'm gonna file that down a little bit and it should tap into that hole Trim it off just a little bit above the, above the tip. I'm going to file it. Flatten it off a little bit. Now we're going to take a, a small bulking hammer. And peen. What it does, it deforms and smashes into that, that little countersink that we made, locks that pin in place. So now we're going to file a little bit off the, the head of that nail. It's a little oversized. Good. Now we're going to peen it a little bit. Probably doesn't need it, but we're going to peen it just a little bit too. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to come back with a mill file, wherever my mill file is. Here, excuse me. And we're going to file that flush. And in the process, we're going to flush up the wood and the tip. Roll it over the other side. File that off flush. And again, 
flush up the wood to the tip. In this case, it's good to put a little more pressure on the metal, that way you don't wallow and eat out the wood. That looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna extend this back just a little bit. Now we're gonna see if it fits in the stock. Insert it. All the way in with a nice, nice firm stop so it's in place. Take a pencil, we'll mark it where we want to cut it off, which is about there. So we'll pull it out. You can use a hacksaw or any little fine saw. I'm just going to run over the band saw real quick and cut that, cut that off. Okay, we cut off the end of the rod. Usually they're cut off about flush with the muzzle. Now we're going to put a little chamfer on the end of that. Looks pretty good. Now I'm also going to take a, a gouge and put a little hollow in the end of that. It's used to seat the ball, to push the ball when loading. You don't have to do this, but I kind of like to do it. So I just take a little gouge that's sharp. You have to be careful, you don't want to hurt yourself. But you can kind of rotate the rod Spin the gouge. Cut a little bit of a, a little hollow in the end there. It's a little off center here. We'll have to get a little better. So that looks pretty good. Important to have a real sharp tool. Okay. I'm going to hit it with the sandpaper. Pulled off a little chip, which I don't like. Ah, another little chip. Just sand a little more on the side here to get rid of those. It's a good idea to sand from the back towards the front and then you're less likely to pull off any chips. Ground over the end a little bit. Okay, so we'll see if it'll fit in the, in the stock, which it probably should. There we go. The rod will need to be sanded a little bit, but it's in place. A pretty nice fit. So the rod is now complete. And I think we will probably wrap it up for this video. Um, next video, we're going to move on to installing the nose cap, the nose piece, the sights. And we may get to the, uh, some of the barrel work, the under lugs and touch hole liner, but we'll see. Um, so this, the gun's well along, really almost um, complete, so we only have maybe, I don't know, another video or two and uh, the gun will be all assembled and it could actually be, uh, be fired. So, well it could be fired now, well soon it could be fired, but it um, uh, won't be long before it's more fully complete. Okay, that's enough, enough for now.